Hey and welcome in another Photoshop tutorial. Today we're going to talk about the levels, one of the most important adjustment layer in Photoshop. So let's jump into Photoshop and talk about everything you need to know about levels in Photoshop. Once you are in Photoshop, you can find your levels adjustment layer in the adjustments over here, all together with everything else, as long as you have the essentials workspace. If not, you can just hit the button below and choose levels. What we see over here, we have three main sliders and the histogram. I will teach you how to read this histogram. The left slider with the dark color is responsible for the shadows. The gray one in the middle is responsible for the midtones and the bright one on the right hand side is responsible for the highlights. And seeing this, it's really easy to read your histogram. You can see a lot of the white space over here between the shadows and the midtones, which means this image contains mainly the areas that are somewhere in the shadows. And what we can see, we don't really have anything over here where our highlights are, which means we don't really have that much of a highlights on this image. So this histogram actually tell us one very important thing, what we could do on this image. We will want to increase a lot of highlights and we want to decrease maybe a little bit of the dark area because what the histogram tells you this image is pretty dark and contains a lot of shadows so first of all i want to increase the highlights to the point they will be actually visible on this image and i'm increasing them till the level that somewhere here as you can see when i get to the white areas it's the right level of the images we actually catching the points where the highlights will be visible the highlights start over here so once you drag your white slider to the point where your highlights start this image will have more balance so I wouldn't do much more over here. I could basically maybe increase a little bit of the shadows over here if I want to increase the contrast, but more than that, I, would, I wouldn't I would really like to do. So we have two sliders below our histogram. And what does it say? We have, once again, on the left-hand side, we have the dark slider, and on the right-hand side, we have the white slider. What does it mean? Simply, this represents the darkest point on the image. So the dark slider is located right now in the pure black. So as long as we have pure black on the image, that's what will be the darkest point of the image. We can change the darkest point on the image. For example, if I'm going to drag this till this level of gray over here, the darkest point of the image will not be darker than this gray that we have over here, which would create a really washed out image. I don't want to go that far, but I wouldn't mind to brighten up this area just a little bit. So now the darkest point is this level of gray over here. Also, we can cut out some whites. As you can see, we don't really have much of them over here. Decreasing them, indeed would decrease a lot of highlights. And as I barely have any highlights visible, I wouldn't really be bothered to decrease that. Also, we have some other things. We have the channels red, green, and blue, which are responsible for the color lights. So what we could do over here, for example, going to red, if I'm going to move the dark slider, which is responsible of the shadows, on the right side, which means I'm decreasing the reds from the shadows. If I'm going to the gray slider, if I'm moving to the right, I'm decreasing the reds from the midtones. And if I'm going to the left side, I'm increasing the reds on the midtones. And then if I'm going to the white slider, as you can see, I'm increasing the reds on the highlights. And the same work will be with any other colors. So here I will be decreasing green from the shadows. With the midtones, I'm decreasing 
greens on the midtones. Here I'm increasing them, and the same I will be increasing greens on the highlights. And the same will be happening with the color blue. And then one more thing. If I'm gonna grab the slider below and I'm going to cut this out, you can see what is happening. In the areas darker than this level of gray will be filled with color green. So if I'm going to this level, as you can see, most of the image darker than this point of white will be filled with the green light. And then if I'm going to move the white slider, everything that would be darker, brighter, of course, then this level of gray, as you can see, will be filled with the color magenta, which is opposite to the green light at this point. And the same would be working with red and blue, of course. Here, as you can see, we increase in red. Here, we fill in the highlights with the, not fill in, but of course, we fill in the all darker spots than this level of gray with cyan color. And then with blue, of course, we will have the blue color and opposite yellow color over here. I don't really want to do anything with colors on this image, but if I do, I will keep the blending mode as a normal. If I want to be sure that I will not affect any colors on the image by working with the lights in RGB channel, I would change blending mode to luminosity. And then if I want to work with colors, I would create the separate adjustment layer. So I could create another levels and this time I would change blending mode, not to luminosity, but to color. So if I would work with the colors this time, I'm not affecting any luminosity values, but only color. Personally, if you ask me what I would do here, probably I would make this image just a little bit warmer using some reds and yellows, but to be honest, levels is not my favorite tool to work with the colors and doesn't give me this uh, confidence. But for the simple adjustments, it's absolutely right. What I feel, I would increase a little bit more of the contrast. I think it would be a little bit better. So this is the basics you need to know about the levels to feel really comfortable in Photoshop. I I hope you enjoyed this lesson. If you want a little bit more information, just check the links in the description. Maybe you will be interested in something more I offer. And I'm going to see you in the next Photoshop tutorial. Thank you.